Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to Wix Wiz. This is the second video in our three video series about using date and time in Wix. In the first video, we talked about how to use date inputs and time inputs with no code. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to manage dates and times with Velo. So we're going to be showing primarily how to combine a date and a time from a date and time input. So here's a date input, here's a time input. And we're going to be showing how after changing one input, we can influence another input by setting a minimum date. So if you want to find out how to do that and more, let's get started. Okay, so before we get started with dates and times in Velo, uh, first I'll just show you what I have open here in terms of documentation. So I have the date picker documentation open here in Velo. I have the time picker, and I also have MDN open on the date article. And dates are super important and also super complex in a way uh, because there's a lot of options and a lot of what to do. And playing around with dates can get sticky, and I'm going to show you some examples of that uh, soon in this tutorial. And having a good grasp of this date object is very important for successful use of dates and time in Velo. So let's go ahead to our site and let's add a date input. Okay, so here I have date and time. Obviously you wanna make sure dev mode is on. And I'm gonna just add a date picker here and I'm just gonna add a time picker as well. And let's go ahead and just tap into this these elements and see you know what their values look like and etc in Velo before we even start trying to play around and, and build anything. So I'm just going to call this date picker date picker. Uh, it doesn't need to be one because we only have one at the moment and this is going to be time picker it doesn't need to be one because we only have one. And let's zoom in a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and select our time picker here. So time picker let me make sure I'm zoomed in enough for you guys. 150. Excellent. And let's see what properties we have here. So we have all of the regular properties, uh, but we can also tap into, let's say, the value here. So I'm going to go ahead and say time picker dot value, and I'm going to say console dot log time picker dot value. Just so we could see what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead here and preview. And in the console, you can see here 2 p.m., okay, which is the default time that we have for the time picker. Okay, and it's showing it in the 24 hour mode. And we'll talk more about that soon. And if I do the same thing for the date picker, uh, what do we have here? Date picker dot value. Okay, and we go ahead into preview. Then here you can see the date, and you'll see here that it has the correct date here, so Sunday, April 23rd, but it has no time. Okay, there's no time displayed here, and that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about is how to combine these dates and times together uh, because it's not as straightforward as you saw in the no code example which was in the previous tutorial. Uh, let's just talk a little bit more about some of the other date and time properties that we have here. So we have the date format. Okay so we can go ahead and set these things using Velo code. So for example I can go ahead and set my date format to look like this. So if I say Oops. Date picker dot, uh, what's it called? Uh, date format. And then I change it to this. Then when I go into preview mode, you'll see, whoops, make sure that I only have one set of parentheses there. Uh, sorry, quotation marks. Then when I go into preview mode, you can see that the year switched around. Okay, so all the things that you can, or a lot of the things that you can tap into using the standard settings. Uh, you can alter them using code as well. Uh, so we can set a max date, a min date, uh, time zone, okay? Uh, and we can do this all based on, you know, where the user is. 
you basically have a lot more control over the dates and times. And I'm going to build an example with you guys soon that hopefully will, you know, challenge us to use a lot of these things. Uh, the first thing I do want to show you, though, is how to combine the date and time together, because I think that that is one of the most critical things that you're going to want to do, uh, because we want to be able to submit a date and time as a date time to a collection. So in order to do that, what we're going to need to do is uh, create a function. And we'll say, call this function const set date time. And we're going to run this function every time we change either the date picker or the time picker. OK, so I'm going to set those for the on change, so date picker and time picker, not time pricker, but time, <laughs> time picker, dot on change. Uh, we're going to run this function. So set date time. Uh, OK, excellent. So we have that set up. Uh, and oh, I accidentally erased. Okay, and now we're going to write out this function. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to say const date equals to date picker dot date uh, dot value, sorry. And const time will be equal to time picker dot value. And now what we need to do is we need to assign this time to this date. OK, so we're going to be using something here from the NDM. And we're going to be doing set. Uh, we can use uh, several things here. Uh, what I'm going to be using is set minutes, uh, because this will help me get the time accurate to minutes as opposed to only hours. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to get the minutes uh, based on our what we have in the time picker. OK, so when we saw the time picker before, you remember that it was pretty much a text. So we have here, let's say, we had 16, let's say 30, and then we had more over here. So what I'm going to do is I want to get this 16, and I want to get this 30. And we're going to be treating this just like a regular piece of text. And then using the 16 and the 30, I'm going to calculate how many minutes that is total. And I'm going to add those minutes to our date. OK, so let's go ahead and say const hours equals to time dot substring. And this is going to be 0 until 2 or 1. I have to remember if it includes it or not. I always forget with substring. And then we're going to have const minutes equals to time dot substring. And here we're going to have two, no, we need to skip one. So we're going to have three and four. And let's just do a console.log hours minutes. OK, and let's test it out just to make sure that we're getting the right hours and minutes. So when I change this, so let's say I change it to 235. Okay, so I got one and three, so that's not what I want. So I'm going to go back to the editor, and this needs to be two, and this needs to be four to six. Let's try that out. Go to preview, and this is 35, and no, okay, so this needs to be. 3 and 5. OK, so basically, it doesn't include the last index. So basically, this is getting us 0 and 1. And then we skip 2, because we don't have it anywhere here. And then we have uh, 3, 5. So it's basically, if I have it here, just to show it out, it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK, so 1, 2 is these two. And then we have the three is this colon here, and then we have four or five. Uh, so just to clarify that, um, 
But as you see, I always prefer to just test it out until I get it right instead of trying to think too hard about which each what each index is in the substring and what a strub string actually gets. That's just how I like to do it. Um, OK, so we have here our hours are our minutes. And now we want to translate this into just minutes. So I'm going to wrap these inside of numbers just so that we can do some mathematical equations with them. And I'm going to say here that const total minutes equals to hours times 60 plus minutes. And then I'm going to set the minutes of this date using our total minutes. So I'm going to say date dot set minutes, set minutes. And I'm going to say that the original minutes should be our date dot get minutes. OK, so get the original minutes that we had in our date and add our total minutes. And this will almost always be 0, but it's a good practice to do it like this uh, because you know there will be other situations where maybe your date doesn't start out with you know zero as the time and you actually want to add time on so that would be how you do it and you'll notice here that i'm not storing this date here inside of a new variable i am just executing this on my original date and i'm going to show you in a moment why that can get annoying and how to deal with some situations that you might encounter with dates in the future uh, but for now, I'm just going to finish and walk through this uh, demonstration. So we set the minutes of the date. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say console.log date. So we're going to log date over here. And I'm going to log the date. Uh, let's do here log date time hours minutes, log total minutes and log date, just so you can see the entire process of what's happening here. So let's go here into preview mode. And I'm going to change, let's say, this to 35 again. OK, so now you'll see here that originally we had the date with no time. And we have our time, and we have the hours and minutes. Then we got the total minutes, and then we assigned those minutes to we assign those minutes over here to our date time. And now we have a full date time with those, that date and those hours and minutes that we wanted. OK, so that's how you combine these date times together uh, in Wix using Velo. And if I go over here uh, and we want to, let's say, submit this to a collection, so I'm going to go ahead and just create you know, a database here. I'm just going to call it test. And I'm going to add a date field. And it's going to include the time field here. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. It's just going to be called Date. And I'm going to insert into that database when we click, let's say, a Submit button. So I'm going to go ahead and add a button here. Let's make this Submit. I'm going to call this submit button. Submit button. And let's add the on click for that. So submit button dot on click. And we are going to import Wix data here on the top. So import Wix data, not data set, sorry, Wix data. And here we're going to say const new item equals, uh, I'm going to turn this into an async function. So I'm going to say async over here and await Wix data dot insert. Test is the name of our collection. And we're going to insert an item with the date that we have from this set date time. So what we can do here is there's several options for how we can approach this. Uh, I'm going to set a global variable here. So let date to save. And basically, I'm just going to assign this value to date to save. 
So I'm going to say date to save equals. OK, and this will assign this value to date to save, but it also makes the change to date. OK, and that's where these dates can get tricky. Um, so if I console here, you'll see the issue that I talked about before. So console.log date to save and date. So in some JavaScript methods, um, you when you assign a new value, it doesn't change the original. Okay, so if I'm assigning something to a new variable, then it wouldn't change my original array, let's say, if I set a filter and assign that to a variable. But here it does change the original date. Okay, and I'm going to show you that by consoling this here. And we have the new item here, and that's just going to be date and date to save. And let's just log our new item. New, no, item. Why can't I see that in the log? Wait. New, oh, I didn't capitalize the I here. OK. Excellent. So let's go ahead and give that a spin. Uh, so I'm going to go into preview mode. And let's change the date and change the time. So let's say, you know, I don't know, 3.56. And let's just take a look here. Uh, so you'll see that in our logs over here, OK, so this date is being displayed in a slightly different way. Um, it's being displayed as a number. So this is essentially the amount of milliseconds since some date in 1970-something. Uh, you could probably read more about that in the documentation in MDN here. Um, I think it, it's somewhere here, basically. Uh, that's how dates are measured. I guess maybe that's when they started using JavaScript dates. Or so, I don't know. I'm not sure the history exactly. Um, but that's what this display here, uh, this display is over here. And if we wanted to see it, let me just click Submit. So we submit to the data set. And if we go to the collection here, then hopefully, OK, so it inserted the date like this, um, which is not what we wanted. Yeah, so what we can go ahead and do to fix that is uh, instead of assigning it like this, I can go ahead and say new date and wrap that over here. OK, and that way uh, we're essentially setting this as a new date, which should have the same format. And if I go ahead into preview mode and change this up, Say 56 again. Yeah, so now you can see uh, that these both are the same dates, essentially. So our original date, which we changed in the right-hand side of the equation, still changed. And now those are both equal. Um, so you can see this date here and this date over here. So if I go back to the editor, then, um, oh, shoot, did I not submit? Sorry, preview mode. And I'm just going to go ahead and change that. Go ahead and click Submit. And let's check out our collection now. Excellent. So we have our date exactly as we wanted. OK, so just by wrapping it inside of a new date, do we uh, get the format that we want? And if we wanted to have a completely new date uh, without changing our original date, so we'll have to create, essentially, we have to create several dates. So you're going to want a new variable for each uh, separate date that we are going to want to create. And then we can say here, let's say, OK, so we have this date time. And then I can declare a new variable over here. So let's say let date, let's say let new date equal date, and not just date like this, but I have to wrap it in a new date. OK. And then if I say new date, whoops, 
new date dot. And we set the minutes and everything like that. So I'm going to copy that over here. New date dot set minutes. And let's just get rid of this for now. Because basically, I just want to demonstrate what the problems can be uh, and how to deal with those problems. Because uh, these are going to happen when you are dealing with dates in Velo. So here we have a new date, which is created by wrapping our old date inside of new date. And if I add a console here, so console.log date and new date, then what we'll see is, and let's say I just change the time over here, so I change it to 4.30 a.m. Then you can see here in our second log that the time of the original date is still at zero, and our new date has the new time. Okay, so we didn't make any changes to the original date. But if I was to go over here and get rid of this new date, okay, so I'm just saying that new date equals to date, and I go into preview mode and make a change to our time, then you can see here that they both changed. Okay, so this is 4.30 and this is 4.30 because essentially what we're doing is we're just saying that this variable of new date is also pointing to this same you know original date in the uh, data hierarchy okay so that's kind of has to do with kind of data theory and data types and variables uh, in javascript in general but i feel like it's even more obvious when we're dealing with dates um, so if you want to assign the value of one date to a new variable without making alterations to the new one, then you're going to have to wrap it inside of new date. Okay, uh, so that's just to help you deal with some issues that you might encounter later on. So now that we've covered the basics of date and time inputs uh, with Velo, what I want to do is create a slightly more complex demonstration, uh, something that you would only be able to use with Velo to really highlight kind of the advantage of using code when dealing with this as opposed to no code. So what we're going to do is we are going to build two sets of inputs here. So we're going to have a date picker and a time picker, and we're going to have another one. And what we're going to do is we are going to limit the dates of the first date picker to only be from today onwards. And the same uh, goes for the time. I mean, the time picker can be 24 hours, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, and we are going to change the second date picker so that it's limited to only the date that was picked from the date picker and onwards. So this is a situation that you might encounter, uh, for example, if you're building some kind of rental service or any kind of service basically where the end date can't really be before the start date, okay? It's a very classic situation, and this is something that you would only really be able to do uh, with Velo. So I'm going to go ahead and call this start date. And this is going to be start time. And this is going to be end date. And this is going to be end time. OK. And what we're going to do here in our code, we're going to need to change some things up here. So instead of having date to save, I'm going to have let start uh, start date time, let's call it, and end date time. OK, so two global variables that I'm setting up here. And when I do set date time, instead of having a generic function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a parameter here. So I'm going to take the date and time, and I'm going to return. I need to kind of reverse some of the things that I did here. So instead, I'm just going to say here, date, get rid of this. And we can get rid of this log here as well, because we know that it's working. We can get rid of these comments here. And instead of getting our date and time like this, I'm going to erase this and just return the date. Okay, 
And we're going to set these using the specific inputs using other functions, just so we have a little more control. Because now we have two sets of date and time, so it's, going to, it's harder to set it with just one function uh, that controls all of the dates and times for the page. And here, uh, for now, I'm just going to comment out this submit button. And what we're going to do here is, first of all, let us, I'm going to comment this out for now as well. First, let's start with setting the beginning dates, uh, the, the dates that are optional for the, uh, the start time. OK, so let's select our start date. And we're going to be setting the disabled dates range. OK. And if we take a look here at the documentation, so disable date ranges. And basically what we have to do is we have to pick a start date and end date for each range. And ranges are inclusive. Let's see if I want to disable all previous dates. Let's see if there's an easier way to do that. Um, min date, let's try that. Okay, so min date uh, prevents us from selecting a date before a minimum date. Okay, so that's exactly what we're looking for here. And we can set our min date essentially to today. Okay, so if I go here and say uh, start date dot min date equals new date. Okay, and when you ever, whenever you go new date, and you don't add anything here in the middle, it'll just create a date object for right now. So the date and time of right now. Uh, so let's just go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So I'm gonna go into preview mode. And you can see here that the uh, minimum date that is set is the 23rd, which is today. Okay, so that set the min date over here for our date picker here. And now what we can do is say that when we change the start date picker, okay, so start date dot on click, uh, sorry, on change. So we can say that here we're going to have an event and const start date equals to event dot target dot value. OK, here you could have also done, let's say, you know, start date dot value. OK, this is just a little more secure. You know, like if you change this at some point, then you'll only need to change it here and not here. But event, essentially, it works in the same way. And then we're just going to say that the min date, so end date dot min date will be equal to start date. OK, and if we wanted, we could also, let's say, add a date to that. So let's first see what this would look like, and then we can talk about how we'd add another day onto that. So I'm going to go here and go into preview mode. So here I'm going to choose, let's say, April 27th. And then here, we already have a non-valid indicator because the date that we selected is before the min date. And if I go ahead and to change it, you'll see here that all the dates until the 27th are blocked out. So let's talk about, let's say, you can only book, so let's say if the start date is the 27th, then the end date can only be the 28th, because let's say we're a hotel, and you know you have to check in the day before, and you check in out the day after, because you want to stay at least one night. Uh, so there's no option to do check in and check out on the same day. So how would we deal with that? Well, actually, this function that we created for the set date time is handy for setting, combining the date and time inputs, but it also can help us to alter dates as we want. Uh, so basically what we can do is say that const min end date will be equal to, and we're going to set the date time, set date time, and we're going to pass in our start date. And basically what we want to do is add 24 hours to this. Okay, so here in time, uh, remember, this time needs to come in as a time object. Uh, so what we can do here is we can separate these into two functions. So I'm going to say const 
extract time from time input value, a very descriptive function. And here we're going to have time input value, and it'll return the total minutes. And it'll basically do these two lines over here. OK, so we're going to go here. And here we're going to have time input value and time input value. And we can say, yeah, total minutes equals to this. And here we're going to have plus time instead of total minutes. OK, and then what we can do is that we can call these two separately if we want to. So set date time can essentially just take minutes, where extract time uh, extract time from time input value will uh, do what we did before. And then we're going to need a third function, const um, get date time from date and time inputs. Maybe later I would think of some better some better names for these functions. So we could say const total uh, const time equals to extract. And then here we would pass in the value uh, of we could pass in let's say the um, let's say time value. And here we'll have date value. So this will be time value. And then we can say return set date time. And here we'll have the date value and time value. Okay, so this is the function that we would use to combine two inputs, which we'll use soon enough. And this is the function that will just set a date and time, regardless of if it was a date and time created manually or if it was created with inputs. And now what we can do here is essentially use that set date time, pass in our start date, and pass in any time that we want in a minutes. So I'm going to set, we want to do 24 hours, so I'm going to do 24 times 60. OK? And then here, I'm going to add the min end date. And if we go ahead into preview mode, and I didn't mess anything up with all the new functions, then if I select here the 26th, then our new min date should be the 27th. OK, so there's one day ahead. And you can, of course, do this with any space that you want. So if the minimum is three days, then you just have to add 3 times 24 times 60, etc. And now what we need to do is just combine all of these um, time inputs together. Uh, sorry, time and date inputs together. So I'm first going to go to our database. And I'm going to open this collection. I'm going to delete this. Oops, delete. Delete these two. Yes, I'm sure. And let's add a date time date with a time value, and this is going to be start time, and this is going to be end time. Date, include time value, time, da, 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 end time. And go ahead and click Save. OK, so now that we have our collection set up, what we can do is that when we click on the Submit button, we're going to get our start date time, our end date time and submit that all to the database. So I'm going to go and uncomment our submit button. And we can say here, so there's two ways that we can go at it, essentially. Uh, we can use the variables that I declared up here to make these change whenever we change either the date or the um, time. Or we can just make the final calculation in the submit button. So let's do the final calculation in the submit button because it's different than what we did before. So I'm kind of showing you a new thing. Uh, so we won't be using these variables that I declared up here, but we will be inserting to the test collection. And we're going to have here start time and end time. 
And the way we're going to calculate those start time and end time is we're going to say start time, start time will be equal to, and we're going to use this new handy dandy function that I created over here. And we're going to need to pass in our date value and our time value. So here, um, I usually don't like to pass in like this. So I don't like to write this out. Let's say date, start date, dot value, kind of using the element here inside of a parameter of a function. That's a personal choice of mine. Uh, so what I would do here is just do um, let start uh, date equal to, let's just call it starting date, just so it's different here from start time and end time, and assign the value over here, and then pass it here. So starting date. And do the same thing for time. So let starting time equal to uh, start time dot value, and pass that in over here starting time this needs to be declared and we're just going to get rid of this so this is the start time uh, which is essentially a date time so i didn't do such a great job of naming these uh these fields in the collection shame on me uh, and here this is essentially just going to be a copy of this actually i'll just copy all of these over and so we're going to have your ending date, ending time, and this is going to be the end date dot value, end time dot value, and this is going to be the end time. And here we're going to pass in ending date and ending time. And I'm just going to add a console here just to make sure that I'm not, just in case we get an error, I'll already know why. So here we're gonna have start time and end time. Okay, let's try this out. Uh, so I'm gonna go here and preview. So we changed our start time, let's say start date to 26th, change it to 4 p.m. And then I'm gonna choose end time on the 29th at 2 p.m. I can even change this. And the advantage here is that I don't even need to change this in order for something to happen. So if the person leaves the time at 2 p.m. and we have the, sub the calculation in the submit button, it will still run the calculation with this value even though it hasn't changed. That's one advantage to actually doing the calculations in the submit button. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit submit. Invalidate, invalidate, awesome. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so we have an error here. So let's go and backtrack a bit and see what might be going wrong. So, okay, so get t date and time from inputs. Oh, whoops. Okay, so this needs to be this. And let's see if that works now. Just change this date up, 26th, and change one of the times, let's say, 5.30 a.m. and click Submit. Okay, so good. So we have here April 27th, 5.30 a.m. We have April 29th, 2.30. And inside of our submitted collection, we have both of the times. Let's go ahead and look at that inside of the collection itself. Yeah, so this is our error from before, and this is the successful submission that we have. So this is like a building block for a tool if you know, you were building some kind of booking system uh, for any kind of service, uh, you'd probably build out something very similar to this. Um, and that'll be all for today. In our next video, as I mentioned, uh, we will be doing a more complex project that will involve dates and times and will require us to deal with different things like time zones, uh, location, stuff like that. So do watch the next video if you want to learn even more about dates and times. But as I said, it's there's a lot, okay? There's a lot here inside of the JavaScript object of dates. And there's a lot also here within these two uh, Bello uh, element documentation. So there's really a lot to play around with and a lot can be done. 
And that's all for today. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please do leave them in the comments below. And I will see you next time. Thank you.